When the history of philanthropy in this country is written, one name will stand out as the guy who made patriotic philanthropy cool. Wander around Washington and you'll find his fingerprints here at the National Archives, at the Library of Congress, the Smithsonian, the Kennedy Center, the White House Historical Center, the White House, and even the Washington Monument. Most importantly, he has become a role model for other philanthropists who have come to recognize that public-private par partnerships are important ways of giving back. We here at the National Archives are huge fans of David and his work, and for me, Personally, coming from the administration of Duke University, it is great fun working with David the Dukey. Please welcome David Rubenstein. David, you've done a spectacular job as the archivist of the United States. I want to thank you very much. Uh, they, this is the only job that's more important than being chief librarian of Duke University. Uh, <laughs> who I should point out yesterday, uh, we won our first game over Notre Dame for more than 60 years. So, um, a few years ago, there's a museum in New York called the Museum of American Finance. Um, could not get anybody to take their annual award, which was called the Hamilton Prize. And so they, you know, got to me uh, eventually, and I said, okay, uh, how much does it cost to get this award? Um, and then, we negotiated the price of that, and then when that was done, you just have to show up for the dinner. And um, at the dinner, uh, right before the dinner, um, the head of the uh, museum said, by the way, uh, would you mind before um, the speech that uh, you're going to give, and Bob Rubin was going to give a speech, um, somebody is doing a play uh, off-Broadway about Alexander Hamilton, and we thought it would be a nice idea if he could perform a few songs. And I said, there are songs by Al about Alexander Hamilton? I <laughs> He said, well, actually, they're hip-hop songs, and hip-hop songs, I said, okay, I don't care, but uh, I hope I don't have to be an investor in that play. Um, 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 that was the same foresight that I used when I turned down the opportunity to be the first investor in uh, Facebook, but anyway. <laughs> So um, the songs were performed by Lynn manuel there, and I thought, okay, they're not bad, and you know, maybe that, I'll go to see that play sometimes, if it ever makes it to Broadway, which I didn't think it would. <laughs> so uh, tonight we are celebrating uh, the fact that Lynn manuel Ron Chernow, and Tommy Kale have become extraordinary figures in revolutionizing Broadway, in revolutionizing um, the musical theater, revolutionizing entertainment, and revolutionizing ticket pricing. <laughs> Um, as I have learned firsthand when I went to the last night of the show uh, that Lynn manuel was performing on July the 9th, uh, there was a true revolution in ticket pricing that evening. <laughs> when you think back on it, um, they are revolutionaries in many ways, and we celebrate revolutionaries as those of us who love American history do all the time. Uh, Washington revolutionized our country by being a great uh, general and being the first president and presiding over the Constitutional Convention. Uh, Jefferson, great revolutionary who gave us the creed that the country uh, was intended to live by. All men and all women are to be yet created equal. And also, as we now know, Hamilton, who really put the economy together in shape and actually uh, did many of the things made it possible for the Constitution to be ratified, which is obviously very important. So three great revolutionaries, uh, Washington, Jefferson, and Hamilton. And we have three great revolutionaries as well uh, this evening who really have revolutionized their, cre by their creativity uh, the way that the entertainment world looks at uh, what they have done. But they've done something more important than, than even that. And obviously, we're all thankful for the play. We're all thankful for the revolution they've created in, 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 in uh, what they've done for Broadway and what they've done for American history and what they've done for the opportunity to have an enjoyable evening and learn something about American history. But to me, the most important revolutionary thing that they've done is they have made young children want to learn more about American history. All of us who care about history know that civics uh, education is not exactly on the uh, most important things that uh, schools teach these days. Very often you, you find young people, and people our age as well, cannot identify the most important things about American history. Less than 50% uh, of Americans in a survey recently could identify the three branches of government, which is hard to believe. And about uh, only 60% of Americans could identify the Vice President of the United States. And this is true when you go into younger ages particularly because civics courses and American history courses aren't 
taught so much anymore. And so I am very, very pleased that the revolution that they, these three gentlemen have launched has really been a revolution not about entertainment and about music and about the theater, but about getting people to care again about American history. And it's our theory, mine and the others here, that if people learn more about American history, they will be better citizens. And if they're better citizens, we'll have a better government. And that's what we all want to have. So I really want to salute uh, the three gentlemen here who have done extraordinary things in revolutionizing not only uh, the entertainment world, but really the American history world and making certain that younger people care more about American history than they ever did before. And that, to me, will be the longest legacy for this play, which I hope will run for centuries. Now, um, I know all of you care about historic documents, and obviously the archives does as well, and all of you uh, know a fair bit about it. And I want to just uh, close with one historic document that is not here, but which I will be dedicating and giving to the, this institution. And this is a letter that I um, discovered recently and came to my possession actually a few days ago. It's from Alexander Hamilton, and let me read it to you. Dear Lynn manuel Ron, and Thomas. <laughs> I'm sorry that I cannot be with you this evening, but I can assure you I am with you in spirit. When I left the earth a bit earlier than I expected, I did not get the chance to write my memoirs, to have others honor me, and to bask in the glory of what I helped to create. But I had to watch with not a small level of pain at what good fortune and praise accrued to George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison long after I left the scene. Good Americans all, but to be honest, not quite as instrumental as I was in getting our new government and its economy off the ground. For God's sakes, Washington couldn't compose a letter without me. <laughs> Adams was a pompous lawyer who was universally disliked. Jefferson spent most of his time wishing he was actually French. <laughs> and Madison took credit for the Constitution. Who conceived and really wrote most of the Federalist Papers? It certainly wasn't him. But as I have learned watching events unfold over the past few hundred years, history looks most favorably on those who live to write about their lives, or at least alive while others do so under their watchful eye. Seeing Thomas Jefferson idolized so much over the past 200 years is particularly painful to me, because I still have to see him every day. <laughs> you cannot escape where we now reside seeing each other though I am frankly shocked that he actually made it here. <laughs> However, because of your wonderful, creative, inspired, and of course accurate recounting of my life in a way everyone can appreciate as well as enjoy, I am at long last a very happy man. I can assure you that some of my former colleagues and rivals are not as happy. They all want a hit musical about themselves. <laughs> I implore, implore you not to give them one. Let them suffer for a few hundred years as I have done. Someday, many years into the future, I expect to meet you and to thank you directly for what you have done to bring pleasure to a 250-year-old man. Until then, keep up the great work, and yes, I did not intend to shoot Aaron Burr. I just wanted to scare him a bit, but he was less of a gentleman than even I had imagined. Your faithful admirer, Alexander Hamilton. Thank you.